fires are emergency events, so things aren't going to go perfect, uh, but we're going to strive to work through those challenges. At the broadest landscape level here in Oregon, um, the fact is that fires know no boundaries, so the biggest challenge is that no matter what agency you're working for or with, everybody really has to work together. Well, wildfire in general and, and high intensity wildfire in particular just is a game changer. Our green and growing forests are now black and dead and, and we literally have to start from square one and pick up the pieces. Right now in, in forests in eastern Oregon, there's been a buildup of fuel over the last several decades, and so that has put those forests at high risk to competition, which then leads to insects, but as well as these larger stand replacement fires. Two thousand thirteen was the worst fire season on state protected lands in Oregon in more than sixty years, and it wasn't an isolated case. It was the continuation of an alarming trend towards larger, more severe, more expensive forest fires. To understand what is happening, we have to look back on how fire behaved historically in two basic kinds of forests in Oregon the moist Douglas fir forests in western Oregon, and the drier forests such as those in eastern and southwest Oregon. So fire was one of the primary disturbances that have shaped uh, forests uh, across Oregon, and really across the west. Um, but the type of fire that has occurred in Oregon varies depending on where you are in Oregon. If you're in western Oregon, the, the time between fires is very long, 100 to 450 years, but when they come, historically they burned very hot, uh, killed uh, most of the trees, but left individual trees alive or groups of trees alive that would then reseed uh, the burned area and then would start a new forest. In Eastern Oregon and in Southwest Oregon, uh, the fire's a lot different. It typically is more frequent, Fires would come every four to say 25 years in Ponderosa Pine, maybe every 30 to 50 years in mixed conifer forest, but it would kind of repeat that cycle. And in doing so, it would thin out the forest, it would consume some of the, the fuels that had accumulated, but usually the severity of the fire, that is how many trees are killed or how much soil was exposed, was quite low. So usually most big trees survived and it really thinned out the smaller fire prone trees. Our dry ponderosa pine forests have a history of uh, lightning fires during the summer and fall and these ecosystems ad have adapted to these frequent low intensity ground fires. With the uh, colonization of this part of the, uh, of the country, uh, the Forest Service and the communities and all people felt that we should suppress fires, that su fires were a bad thing on the landscape. Over time, because of that suppression of fires, we've had a lot of unnatural growth and development of thick stands. But what we've really begun to understand in the last couple decades is fire has an important role in the ecosystem. Uh, all the plants and wildlife have adapted to these frequent fires. And our forest management needs to take that into account in the type of management practices we implement. The east side, the drier side forests are really in a, a challenging condition. Uh, with nine million acres at moderate to extreme risk of large catastrophic wildfires, we need to really have a landscape level approach of treating, actively managing those lands to bring them back into conditions that are a lot more resilient. Not only resilient for growth and green, and providing all the uh, environmental benefits, but also resilient to fires. The forests in Western Oregon have different challenges, not the least of which is that land ownership is much more complicated. And those ownerships represent widely different objectives for the land. Much of the private land is highly productive, and large industrial tracts form the foundation of Oregon's important forest products economy. Thousands of these parcels are owned by families. These owners may grow timber or simply live on the property. And interspersed with all of this are lands managed by the BLM and Forest Service. In Western Oregon, there's about five million acres of alternate one mile by one mile 
uh, ownership between federal lands and private lands. And, and we sometimes refer to this as the checkerboard, but most landowners refer to this as the ONC lands. Managing timberlands in the ONC is complex to begin with. When you add fire considerations on top of that, it's just one more overlay of complexity. The 2013 fire season was epic, and one of the biggest fires was the Douglas Complex. An unexpected lightning storm started dozens of fires in the Owen Sea, south of Roseburg. Firefighters quickly extinguished most of them, but a few got away and grew into what became a 48,000 acre fire, burning across a mix of federal and private lands. At the peak of that fire, we had over 3,000 firefighters on that incident. Now with that comes a lot of uh, challenges as well. Putting that fire out and making sure that those firefighters are ready day in and day out, night in and night out, to, to be able to perform the duties that we ask of them. We also need to ensure that they're fed, they're showered, and they have a place to sleep. So ODF is prepared for that as well. But essentially we have fire kitchen units, we have shower units, we have fire cash vans in those vans have with them all the hose, the pumps, everything you can imagine a firefighter needs. We also have the uh, technology trailers, the mapping trailers, and the communication trailers to ensure that everything operationally is supported out there on the front line. Well, Roseburg has 11,000 acres roughly involved inside the fire perimeter. Of that, 3,000 are what we call merchantable timber timber of a size uh, that you can merchantly convert that tree to a log. Uh, but the other 8,000 were part of our, what we call our growing stock, our young forest, that we're gonna provide future harvest potentials uh, in the next 15 to 25 years. And we lost that piece of it almost completely, especially in the high intensity severity area. Large fires have many costs. Firefighting is only one. There is also destroyed timber, such as what Roseburg Forest Products lost in Douglas Complex. There are health effects from smoke. There is damaged infrastructure and lost tourism revenue to fishing guides, river guides, restaurants, and motels. And fires can damage watersheds and municipal water supplies. So how do we reverse the trends? In the dry forests, the problem is huge millions of acres, but there's broad agreement on how to move ahead. When you look at the issue of wildfire, uh, particularly in Eastern Oregon, is that we were seeing um, fires burn in an uncharacteristic way and really threatening a lot of other values. And I think that brought together a lot of people who said, you know, this isn't, this isn't working. The Forest Service, along with collaboratives that include landowners, mill operators, conservationists, state government and local elected officials, are designing projects to restore these overgrown eastern Oregon forests. Smaller trees are thinned out and brush is cleared to help prevent flames from climbing into the crowns of trees. The stand behind me has been commercial thin, but we've also reduced the ladder fuels, the dense non-commercial understory, and then we uh, brought a prescribed fire in here to reduce uh, the fine fuels. If we had a wildfire in here, the, there's a high likelihood that the fire would stay low on the ground, would not get up in the crowns. Uh, there's not enough uh, interconnectedness of the crowns here to carry a crown fire. What do collaboratives do? It's a lot about values, and sometimes those values conflict. And even though the collaboratives like to base their decisions on science, science and information from science doesn't give us the answer, it helps inform the answer. And so the issue is trying to blend some of the science with the values to come out with a decision on a piece of the landscape that has to meet the social, ecological, and economic um, objectives uh, for the landscape. In Oregon's productive western forests, ultimately, the solution is to continue to fund aggressive efforts to put out fires as quickly as possible. The Oregon Department of Forestry's goal is to extinguish 98% of all fires before they reach 10 acres. There is too much at risk, from valuable private timberlands to individual family homes. 
Fire suppression and prevention is the foundation of forest management in, in Oregon. Our objective is active management, providing economic, social, and environmental benefits from a green and growing forest, and we can't do that when we're working with a black and dead forest. The path forward depends on where we are in the state. In the moist forest west of the Cascades, Oregon will have to continue to make sure its firefighting force is up to the task. From well-trained personnel and adequate equipment to effective high-tech methods of communication and fire detection. Firefighting and prevention are critical in dry forests too. But here we have another tool. Projects that combine local collaboration with active forest management are underway to restore forest health and fire resiliency. But most agree the pace and scale of that work has to be accelerated to reduce the risk of large, uncharacteristic fires. 